God is love, and love must love, and to love there must be a beloved. But since God is existence infinite and eternal, there is no one for him to love but himself. And in order to love himself, he must imagine himself as the beloved, whom he as the lover imagines he loves. Beloved and lover implies separation and separation creates longing, and longing causes search. And the wider and the more intense the search, the greater the separation and the more terrible the longing. When longing is most intense, separation is complete. And the purpose of separation, which was that love might experience itself as lover and beloved, is fulfilled, and union follows. And when union is attained, the lover knows that he himself was all along the beloved whom he loved and desired union with, and that all the impossible situations that he overcame were obstacles which he himself had placed in the path to himself. To attain union is so impossibly difficult because it is impossible to become what you already are. Union is nothing other than the knowledge of oneself as the only one. That's from Mayor Baba's book, The Everything and the Nothing. Mayor Baba was an Indian philosopher who, for the last 40 years of his life, I believe, stopped talking completely. And... I really love that passage. You might want to go start this video over and read it again. I, it took me a while to to understand what was happening in that. And maybe I still don't even understand what's happening in it. But I love it because towards this age of reunion, we are expanding our sense of self and and these you know, for a while, starting in the age of hippie, in the 60s, in the 70s, we were so concerned with our, you know, these individual quests for spirituality and spiritual growth. And Charles Eisenstein talks about this in his essay, uh, Why the Age of Guru is Over. And he talks about this mentality in the 60s where all these hippies were saying, you know, we don't need anyone else. We, for our spiritual, you know, path, we need self-sufficiency and I have everything myself and I don't need anything else. You know, I can, I can take joy and, and find enlightenment in the simple things that are here right now. And while that's true, most of that is true, you know, Charles Eisenstein says, but we can't do it alone. You know, our enlightenment is predicated on the enlightenment of others and our relationships. And we can't just sit in a vacuum and meditate here and think that we are transcending into the cosmos of perfection purity when the world is being slaughtered. So one thing I I just did a kundalini yoga session and one thing I did was just hold poses really uncomfortable poses for a long time just to feel suffering and feel the suffering of the world's wounds and acknowledging all the pain that's that we feel as as a global entity as a global community because as much as i feel amazing when doing yoga and meditation i still feel a void and a, a sharp pain at, at what's happening right now and what's been happening 
And I think it's important to acknowledge, you know, every day take some time to feel the suffering, feel the indigenous people, the, the plight of, of indigenous peoples across the world whose homes for, for thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years, are being just demolished for, for cattle ranches, for sugar plantations, for, you know, for our hum civilization's progress, or what we call progress. Um, you know, feel the oceans that are gasping for air and gasping for life, you know, through the, the massive plastic islands and and acidification and the fish going it's extinct you know feel the 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 huge numbers of school children of of kids going through the school system that's killing their creativity you know i am one of them and i i, I feel that deeply um, and feel the pain of these corporate CEOs who, despite all of their material wealth and their cars and their pools and their, their supposed, their supposed, you know, ascension up the ladder, you know, they've made it, right? But they haven't made it and feel that void that they have when they, one day, they're going to look back and say, what have I done? Why have I sacrificed ecosystems and life on Earth for green pieces of paper and a disconnected life that, that is lacking in so many aspects? And, you know, I work at... Uh, a food co-op in Cambridge, Boston, and you know there are people there that work seven days a week for up to like fifteen hours every day, several jobs, people from Haiti, from Colombia, from El Salvador, and it's just you know feel what they have to go through to live in this society and how much suffering and how much pain they have to endure to feed their families. And we've made it like that. There is no scarcity. It's, it's an artificial scarcity and survival anxiety that we've implemented upon ourselves. So I think it's important that we let ourselves feel from our, from our hearts as much as possible you know, you know, we, we feel a loss when a tree is cut down or a river is poisoned. And whether our whether or not our minds want to acknowledge that, you know, they probably there's probably a mental dialogue that happens that says, Oh, I'm here, the river's there, the tree's there, and that's not part of me because I don't need any of that. I have my processed foods that are that are produced in a laboratory and I, you know I have my air conditioning and my little disconnected life that is we've made separate from everything else and cut off all relationships and dependency to other beings to other other ways of doing of, of relating to the world and we feel that on a very visceral, you know, innate level that we are dependent on the trees and we are dependent on the planet. And so I encourage us all, and I try to work on it every day, to just f feel, feel pain but also be grateful for so much that we have. And in, in his last video, Phil said, Phil said the, 
the quote that happiness is an emphasis on what you already have, not, not on what you don't have. So gratitude, feeling fully with your heart. Look into someone's eyes and feel them. See that they're there and just be there with, with them for a few moments as many people as you can every day and cultivate new relationships based on this this new way of reciprocity of interconnectedness of dependency because this is what we're really searching for there's this deep fissure this deep emptiness inside of us and it's this, this craving for authentic relationships and and real life real life so that's that have a wonderful friday and live spontaneously scoobly doobly do I'm not a man.